guys the other day I made myself a little wallet and it's from the by Annie folding wallet pattern and I needed to quilt the outside of it and the pocket and so it was a long strip it was a 9 by 22 strip of fabric and so I knew I was gonna have to re-hoop and so I didn't want my stipple where I re-hooped I didn't want it to have a sharp line going across there and you could kind of tell where it was gonna be one hooping and then the next and so I created the stipple pattern in the IQ designer or the design center and I'm gonna show you how I did it so first thing I wanted to talk about was when you're quilting on the embroidery machine there's two bobbin cases now the machines that are a combo they're a sewing and embroidery combination they come with both bobbin cases so you have the one that has the little green dot and that's like the regular sewing bobbin case and it's weighted so that your bobbin and your top thread are weighted and they're balanced the what we call the purple dot bobbin case it has that little purple dot down in there and sometimes it's a red dot um, but it has that dot down in the bobbin case it is a tighter tension and it's kind of an adjustable bobbin case and so you can adjust that tension screw and but its tension is tighter and so when you're doing the quilting you want really more of a balanced tension and so the machines that are just the embroidery only they only come with the embroidery bobbin case or the tighter tension bobbin case so if you're going to be quilting with your embroidery machine and it was the embroidery only you might want to get you a regular sewing bobbin case and we keep those in stock all the time so I'm going to put the bobbin the regular sewing bobbin case back in and I'm going to get threaded up okay so when you go and you're changing out your bobbin cases first thing you want to do is make sure that the needle is in the very top position and so by doing that you can either hit the needle up needle down button a couple of times or just turn the hand wheel and make sure that raised line that's on your hand wheel is all the way at the top and that gets the everything where it needs to be and then you just make sure the little fuzzy part on your bobbin case is going left to right and then you just there's a little arrow or a little dot there and then a little dot on the bobbin case and you just line those up and then you drop that down in there but don't think that you're done <laughs> you want to check it so you want to make sure that that bobbin case kind of jiggles just a little bit and then I turn the hand wheel one complete turn and see how that metal hook is going around the bobbin case and you know everything is seated right if that goes all the way around when one rotation and so you just want to double check it before you put your little cover back on and then put the bobbin in and so again this is the one that's just the regular sewing bobbin case so that way I'll get more of a balanced tension when I'm doing the quilting So my quilting, I just hooped up this little sample fabric. So it's just, I'm doing it in the five by seven hoop. And so I wanna quilt this whole area and then I'm gonna have to re-hoop to quilt this area up here. So what I'm gonna do is go into the IQ Designer or the Design Center part of the machine and usually you can go into your shapes and usually what I do is I go get me a square and then I size that square to like whatever size my quilt block is but because I know I want to quilt basically this whole area that's in my five by seven hoop up here at the top of your screen you have the hoops and so you can go there and then I'm just going to choose that five by seven hoop and say okay and it brings up the five by seven area. So I know it's gonna fill my hoop now. And then I'm gonna fill it with the stipple. So what I'm showing you to make your quilt designs kind of join together and not make it look like it's patched basically together, it works really well with the stipple. It might not work, well it won't work at this way if you're doing like the geometric patterns, but with the stipple it works great. So I'm gonna go into that piece of paper diagonal from my paintbrush and go get the stipple pattern and then make sure you touch the bucket next to your paintbrush and then fill that hoop area and then I'm going to push next 
And now I'm doing this on the Meridian, so the Meridian and the Stellaires and the Altair to go see what it looks like. You have to hit preview and okay. The Luminaire and the Solaris will generate the preview automatically. And so I can say, okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna play with my stipple size and everything a little bit. So I'm gonna hit return. I'm gonna take this down. I like to take this um, distance all the way to zero. So that way it goes all the way up against my block. And then I'm gonna make the stipple pattern itself just a little bit bigger. Mainly just because so when we stitch it off, it doesn't take as long to stitch off here in a minute. I want it to get to four. Okay. And then again on the Stellaires and Meridian and Altair, I have to preview and okay. So see how I would get a really kind of sharp edge across that stipple pattern right there. And so when I re-hooped, you'd probably be able to kind of see where that was. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit return. I'm going to hit return again, and that takes me back into the main page of the IQ Designer or Design Center. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to get my eraser. And then I'm going to choose my size eraser. I'm just going to pick that. Well maybe that one and what I'm going to do is just kind of start erasing a little bit up here and just kind of I'm, I don't want it to be a solid I want it to kind of meander around just a little bit and then maybe here okay so I've just erased so it's not going to be a straight edge so we'll go see what that looks like Okay, so see how now it's not a straight edge across there. I've kind of made it swoop down a little bit. Okay, so I'm good with that. I'm going to push set, and that's the big set. That's what we're calling the happy set, because that means you are happy with your design and you're ready to go over to the embroidery side. And so now I'm just going to stitch that off, and then when we get ready to hoop, I'll our rehoop for the next section. We'll come back and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I got the first hooping done, and so I'm ready to do the second hooping. And I went and got the plastic template because on this template it shows me the sewing area for this particular hoop. And so I want to make sure when I rehoop that this area where I erased part of that is going to be in the actual sewing area of the next hooping. So I'm going to make sure and hoop it like that. And then I have to use my phone and my app and I left my app, my phone over there. Hang on. Okay, so with the Stellaires and the Meridians, we've got to use the app. With the Solaris and the Luminaire, you can just scan it in right on the machine. But I'm going to go into the Positioning app, and it's going to choose my machine. And I'm going into the IQ Designer part, or the Design Center. So this time I'm going to use the second option here on the app. And I'm going to hold my phone until it counts down. Three, two, one. And then send that to the machine. Okay, and then we'll go back over to the machine. Okay, so when it finished stitching my first hooping, um, I just said okay and hit the little home again and then I'm going back into IQ Designer or Design Center and the picture that I sent over or that I scanned is going to be located underneath this little leaf icon up there at the top and if you have the um, Solaris or the Luminaire you would just push scan and then it would take the picture but since I'm doing this on the Meridian I'm going to hit the little Wi-Fi symbol and the last picture that you took is going to be the first one that's in your line here. And I'm going to set that. And it comes up and it's kind of faint right now. So I'm going to darken that just a little bit. 
but I'm gonna show you what happens if you darken it too much. So there's the image and you can see my stipple down here at the bottom, okay? So I wanna fill this hoop again. So I'm gonna go back to my shapes and I'm gonna go get that hoop icon or I could, if I'm doing a block, I could draw, um, you know, size my block to whatever size my block is, quilt block. I'm gonna choose the five by seven hoop, say okay. And then I'm gonna go get my stipple pattern. So I'm going into the piece of paper diagonal from the paintbrush, choose my stipple, say okay, hit the bucket and then fill that and notice how it doesn't look like anything happened, and that's because my image is so dark. But if I lighten it just a little bit, now you can see the stipple, and I can still see where it stippled the stitch out is. And so I'm gonna zoom in down there so y'all can see that a little bit more. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I want to erase where I already have the stipple. All right, so I'm just gonna turn on my eraser again and then just erase like where this stipple already is. Now, I'm going to lighten this image even more and make sure, yeah, I don't have any little red dots there, so I erased all of it. And then I'm gonna go to next. Actually, I'm gonna darken that back a little bit. Go to next. I'm gonna go ahead and change these to the same setting. So I'm taking that distance down to zero, like I did with the first one. The size I took to four. So when you size the first one, make sure you remember what you sized it to. And I did mine to 0.4. And then set and preview and okay. And so you can see now this next stipple will kind of undulate in and around that first one and so it's not going to have a straight line going across there so i'm just going to hit set again and okay oh update the background image yes that's okay and hit embroidery and stitch that off oh it's going to start up there we'll come back and show you how it stitches down here at the bottom so see, you can hardly tell where one started and one stopped. And we were gonna film um, it stitching off down there, but Bailey and Tyler were, our, our Bailey, Bailey and Doug were arguing with me that undulate wasn't a word. And I looked it up and undulate means having a smoothly rising and falling form or outline. So it is to a word. So my designs undulated together. <laughs>